Hey, good morning, everyone. It is uh, January 10th, and it's that time again for our daily Bitcoin cryptocurrency news. Uh, today's go. Today's gonna be a little bit different. I'm still gonna go over. I'm gonna go recap all the coins and see which ones are really good because today is a down, down day. But I want to cover one of the coins that's been most hyped for the past week or so, and that's Nebulio. Um, everyone's asking me about it, and one of the most irritating things I get from from anyone that's watching, uh, insiders, everything. A lot of people tend to get into the hype, right? They, they buy into the hype, FOMO kicks in, everyone keeps trying to get into something, right? And that bothers me because people don't do their own research. And I've told you guys, even what I say to you guys, do your own research and I'll tell you why because I actually made a mistake on one of, on one of my picks and I'll reveal that too. Um, so today, I'm going to go over the list. I'm going to go over Nebulio and tell you guys why I think it's one of the most hyped coins so far of this year, of this brand new year. And it's not against the team. It's not the team's fault. This is kind of like some of the the other um, pumps that I, I pointed out, like Sia coin, Delta coin. It's not the team's fault. It's the YouTubers and, and whoever, the whales that's manipulating the market, generating false uh, false hype, then FOMO kicks in, and you'll see something like Nebulio go up uh, three, four hundred percent within a few days, and it's totally not warranted. So I'm going to tell you guys why I think it's not warranted. Right? This is just going to be like that video where I covered uh, get out of pump place. This is going to be exactly that. Okay. All right. So starting out. Oh yeah, and then at the end I'll re I'll reveal the. The pick that I uh, I promise I would reveal. All right, so um, going down the list. All right, today is a down day. So unfortunately, the last few days we've seen the market cap go around. Yesterday, the last two days, it's around 714 billion, 710, and then throughout the day it will go up, 740, 750. Uh, we've seen as high as 800, and then toward the end of the day come back down, and then going all the way until today it's been down. Um, so it's interesting to see the market's not crashing, but you have you do see some big losers and then you see some winners, but most of the winners that you see are the are the ones that are going up in double or triple digits. Um, so yeah, so I think there might be some volatility coming. Um, so some people point out the Bitcoin futures. The first Bitcoin future is go um, expire pretty soon, so there might be some volatility due to that. Well, overall, things aren't too bad. It's definitely a good chance to buy cheap coins. Okay, um, you know we sat through two decent corrections. You know a few days ago, um, probably three days, three four days ago, we saw 20 30 percent correction that came back up pretty quickly. Then of course, oh, two weeks ago, we saw the big Bitcoin correction with everything going down 30 40 50 percent. So. This is not too bad, but obviously, you know, those that are, you know, disappointed, hoping that their portfolio goes up every single day. It's not going to happen, right? So take the opportunity to buy things while it's cheap. So Bitcoin definitely came down a little bit. 14000 not bad. Ethereum is on, it's hot right now. Um, a lot of people ask me because my hedge strategy of the 50-25-25 rule, right? Um, they're like, hey, can we replace Bitcoin with Ethereum? Because Ethereum seems to be... A better hedge um, it seems to be going up faster and um, and overall it just seems like it's safer to store your coins in Ethereum I'm mixed by that because of the fact that we have seen periods where Ethereum is really rock stable okay especially when it was around the 300 mark it was around 300 for months and back then I said yeah I think Ethereum is good uh, like a staking coin like where if you want to transfer value you put it in the Ethereum but we have seen Ethereum go up quite a bit since those days, right? Ever since it passed 400, 500, it started going up really rapidly. And Ethereum, I think, should be at these levels. I, at 130 billion, I don't think it's overbought at all, okay? Charts might show something else. But in terms of, if you compare it relative to these other generation, um, these generation two platform coins or platform coins in general or enterprise coins, uh, this is still a bargain. Ethereum should be, you know what? Ethereum can be at 200 or 235, 
it could be equal to Bitcoin's uh, overall market cap. I think that's warranted for Ethereum, okay? Let's face it, we have 1,398 cryptocurrencies and probably 1,300 of those is based on Ethereum. Uh, it's a little high, probably like 1,200, right? But still, 1,200 is probably based on Ethereum. So you got one, one network, one platform that's supporting probably 95% of all the cryptocurrencies out there, okay? So think about that. that. That's the foundation right now that basically all these are living on. Um, and the IOU tokens like EOS tokens, for example, right? Um, Cardano tokens. These are all ERC-20 IOU tokens until the network comes up. Um, so Ethereum is, relative compared to everything else, Ethereum is definitely really, really undervalued, okay? I... I if Ethereum was sitting at 200 billion today, I say that's okay. That's not overvalued in my mind. Um, but as for a hedge, I'm still on the fence on that, on that because things that go up very quick tend to come down really quick. And right now, it's kind of that period where Ethereum is getting really hot. But in a few months, you know, that might change. It might be that, or maybe even next week or two weeks, it might change where it it moves back down really quick too. So. Um, I still like Bitcoin better at this time, but I would say if you wanted to do that strategy where you hedge 50% with Ethereum, uh, it's not too bad. Uh, I mean, you can, you can give it a try. I think that that could work. Um, we'll just see. It's just uh, right now, things are a little bit iffy. You know, Bitcoin's definitely not performing like Bitcoin, like how it was before. Ethereum is definitely coming back, so that's good. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. So if you guys want to practice that, that's fine. Um, Ripple. Everyone keeps asking about Ripple. George, what should I do about Ripple? It's going down, 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 right? Ripple was overbought. And I said that many times. A lot of people didn't like it. I kept saying it's overbought, 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 right? I, I'm still not saying that this is, I'm not doing what I say it's bad, okay? But it was clear. Ripple was overbought. It should never have gotten that high. It should never have gotten above two dollars, two fifty, three dollars, three fifty. That's insane, okay? Um, and when things go up that fast, people look for ways to knock it down. So now there's something. So someone showed me a news. Um, Ripple is having a lawsuit against someone else, uh, and this one could be a devastating one. Um, I guess with a company called R3, and there's an R3 coin. I don't know if it's that company or not, okay? So back when, back in the day, Ripple made some kind of deal where um, the, this R3 company could purchase up to 10% of Ripple for less than one cent, okay? And and I don't, I don't know the details around that. You guys should look. Um, I should have read that more in detail, but I know the overall story is that company could buy 10% of Ripple um, coins for one cent, less than one cent each. And this was before Ripple has gone up huge. Okay, so now that Ripple went up so much, that would have been worth, when Ripple was above 100 billion, you know, it would have been worth $10 billion. Now it's worth about $7 billion. Ripple changed its mind. Ripple is like, no, we don't want to give you though. We don't want to give you that option yet uh, or anymore um, because it's not worth it. And Ripple is trying to uh, take a lawsuit against that company trying to cause all this commotion saying, oh, they didn't promise what they delivered and this and that. So I don't know the entire story. I don't know which side is right or wrong, but it makes Ripple look bad because they made a business deal and they promised this company that they can buy up to 10% of Ripple at one cent each. Of course, that company would want to buy it at when Ripple was $3, $3.50. It would have netted them $12 billion, but Ripple is stopping that. And now there's a big lawsuit. So um, and then there was, you know, the, the, the thing about Ripple being added to Coinbase and all this stuff, right? So we had a big period of mass uh, FOMO and everyone trying to get into Ripple caused it to go up way too high, okay? And now things are coming back down. Should you buy Ripple at this point? I would say no, okay? So I'm kind of changing my tune. I said if, we buy, if Ripple goes under $2 to buy Ripple at 2 I don't think so anymore. I think Ripple is going to see more turmoil, okay? I think there's going to be more FUD, more bad news coming out of Ripple camp because when things go up, people try to find things to knock them down. And I think there's there might be more skeletons or more things that's coming out. Um, 
I don't think Ripple's gonna drop down tremendously, right? So I don't think Ripple's gonna like fall below f uh, three by any means. I think it's probably gonna go ahead around 150, uh, possibly around um, 125. Uh, I think that might be where it goes, and then it'll kind of hover and it might go back up. So it really depends on if all th this other, my intuition is telling me that some other bad news might be coming out. But if it doesn't, it might hover at this point, but I, I'm, my gut tells me I think this is going to go down more. So I'm going to take this off the buy table for now. I would say wait at least for it to go under 150 before buying. Okay, and many of you guys that bought at two fifty three dollars, um, don't don't panic sell. Okay, so Ripple's one of those long term plays. So if you do have it, just hold it. It might take you a while. It might take three months. It might take two weeks. It might take a year. But Ripple will go back to it, and you will be in the green. But you just might have to hold it a little bit longer. Okay, um, Bitcoin Cash. Not sure why it went up. All right, so we, we got a lot of reds here. Okay, some of the bigger movers went down. Uh, Stellar is going down. All right, I think Stellar needs to... Um, you know what? The reason why I recommend Stellar going up so much is because I said it was go ride the coattails of Ripple. And now that Ripple is showing weakness, Stellar's been showing weakness. I do think Stellar is go you know, kind of fork away from Ripple because they have been making different uh, partnerships. So I'm hoping more of those partnerships comes up. But until that happens, if there's nothing from the, the Stellar camp and Ripple goes down more, Stellar will go down more. So um, Stellar holders, be careful. Um, Stellar is also one of those coins that went really, really fast from like, you know, 1 billion, 2 billion, went up to 10 billion, you know, 15, 12 billion. And I said that I think it will go up higher to 20 something billion. Because Ripple was just going higher and higher and higher. So um, Stellar's not bad. It's just that I think because of Ripple's fall, Stellar will fall. So um, so do not buy at these levels is, is, is what I'm saying. But if you do own Stellar, just hold it. Um, all right. So Tron has now fallen to $0.10. Cents, okay. Um, Tron is unfortunately a casualty too. When you have, and here's the other thing too about FOMO and newcomers into cryptocurrency, because you got so many newcomers that are not used to big corrections or not used to corrections at all. All these newcomers come in because they're promised big gains. And for the most part, people have seen it, right? You hold on something and it just doubles or triples or tenfolds in a month. Okay, but unfortunately, when you have correction time, or when FUD comes out and bad news is drawing, is bringing the price down, these newcomers get scared, they panic, and they sell off right away. Right, so it goes in reverse. So as fast as a coin could go up, it'll go down equally as fast because of all that new money coming in, and most of them is from newcomers. So. That's why Ripple has been coming down so fast and Tron is falling down even faster, okay? And Tron is one of those I really liked, but I told you guys, right? At 17 cents, I told you guys to sell at least half. I said it's gone up way too fast. Take half out now, okay? And Tron, after that point, it, you know, went up and down, up and down. There's still more news coming out with Tron. They still have a coin burning coming. And there's supposed to be some big partnership with NASDAQ companies, which might drive it up again. But the two bad news I mentioned yesterday about the $6 billion sell and um, the white paper copy, um, that just that was too much for a lot of people. And it really wasn't too much for most people. It was because Tron was already overbought, way overbought. And it just gave an excuse for a lot of these whale institutional investors to sell off. And then everyone just contributed, oh, it must be these, these two pieces of news. And that's why it's drawing down fast. I don't think so. I think it's because an investor just want to pull out because it would just went up like, you know, 20x. Um, so um, what should you do over Tron, right? So I said in the past few days to buy Tron about 11, 12 cents. Uh, obviously, we're below that. I think if you bought at 11, 12 cents, you're, you're safe. I don't think Tron will fall that much more. 
If Tron falls because the rest of the market is fall, it might fall to maybe nine cents, eight cents. But if the market recovers, I think Tron will stay here. And there's a very good chance that if those upcoming news, like the partnerships, Justin promised with NASDAQ listed companies uh, comes true and they might be huge. That could be a huge push for Tron to go back up again. So you got to wait for that. And then also the coin burning, which uh, I forgot the percent. It was like 25% or, or something like something huge. That should decrease the amount of tokens and that should drive the price up too. So it's not all bad for Tron. Obviously, I still like Tron. I just I've been saying it too. It's just been way too overbought. And now it's coming back to the levels where it should be. Um, and the, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So should you buy? Uh, I would say it's it's not bad to buy a 10 cents. But I think if it falls, we'll see how the market is the rest of the day. If the market is still bad, it falls to 9, 8 cents, then definitely buy. Um, especially if it, if it hits 8 cents, it's definitely buy. Um, all right. So some of these just down a little bit. Um Rybox up a little bit. It's been down for a few days. Okay. Ethereum Classic, surprised. Uh, Verge, um, definitely coming down. After Wraith, it went back up. Now it's coming down. As long as Wraith, I mean, uh, Verge could hold her at 2 billion, um, then it's here to stay. Um, it's just that it's, it's too much turmoil right now between on Verge. So I just want to see it, you know, just hover around here for a while. All right. Um, so I might go, uh, I said they were a good buy. I think falling down, they didn't fall that much. It, it, it just falls to 20, uh, definitely a good buy. Even at this level, 22 is not a bad. Uh, Sidecoin is going down. Zcash is holding very strong. Um, yeah, Zcash was down for a while. Now it's coming back up. I still like Zcash. I think this is a pretty good buy point, actually. Um, Binance coins come down. KuCoin. See, this is not right. Ku, KuCoin shares is now worth more than buy. Binance coins. That's not right. KuCoin is not nearly as big as Binance, right? So, but right now, this is popular because Binance closed registrations and everyone has to be, I mean, they're forced to use KuCoin. Not to say they're a bad exchange, but they're not Binance. So, in my opinion, this is too high. Um, that's overbought. Uh, in my opinion, Binance Coin is overbought. Okay, but um, they keep going up and up and up. So let's see. Let's see where these go. Um, I, I'm still not recommending them. A lot of people buy them just to reduce fees. That's fine. But as an investment, I don't know. I mean, I've seen these Binance go as high as 20s, um, and it's pretty high. But uh, you know, I'm not a fan uh, of these coins at those prices. Uh, Ardor coming down a little bit. Um, Bit shares coming down quite a bit. V chain is holding strong. Um, uh, let's see. Delta coin falling. Steam falling. You notice the big fallers are the ones that's gone up a lot recently, and that's because of this newcomer money coming in, right? Newcomer com money coming in, it gets pulled out. That's why they're going down uh, faster than others. Dragon chain has gone down. Wax went up. Uh, there's not many places to buy wax, by the way. I think that's really holding wax back. Um, all right, so these all double digits, pretty much. Yep, Pivx is even Funfair. Yeah, I mean Funfair has been going up a lot, so that's that's to be expected. Red coin. Um, a lot of these going down. All right, so. Some of these, uh, so you, you know, so I'm going through this fast. Some, some of you guys are thinking, oh, okay, well, these are down. What, what are buys? Um, a lot of these, even though they're down, they're still overpriced, in my opinion, because the market's just been so hot. So that's why there's there's not a lot of like golden opportunities right now that I'm seeing. Um, I skipped over a few basic attention coin. I, I talked to about them a lot at 70, you know, up to a dollar to go go there. Um, so I think this is still a good buy. If it falls further, definitely a better buy. Um, let's see. Substratum, it, you know, it hit like 280. I think this is still going to go much higher. This is good. Um, 
Power Ledger, still uh, good in my book. I'm going to talk about Nebulo, okay? So this took a big drop, 35%. That's a pretty significant drop. And I think it's going to go down more, especially after what I tell you guys. Um, all right. So where are some buys here? Vibe is definitely the pump of the day. It, you know, it just got released. It's going to be added to Binance. People are going crazy about Vibe. I'm going to do some research and see if this is warranted because no coin should go above 100% in a day. Um, I've seen it, obviously, right? And we have seen things go up. But when it goes up 400% a day, you know, something's wrong. Okay, it's being extremely pumped. Um Man, Raiden is holding extremely strong. It's still going up. There's a lot more uh, talks about Raiden um, uh, talking with a lot of these bigger companies that 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 has scaling issues. And I, I've told you guys this. You know, Raiden is gonna go much higher. This is gonna be one of the the most used networks um, or pro, I guess protocols, right? The Raiden network for ERC twenty because out of the the 13, 1400, you know, um, companies out here, most of them are ERC 20 based. So, uh, Raiden is going to have a bright future. Um, uh, I don't recommend buying at this point. I'm hoping it comes down, but this might go up overall. I think Raiden network 500 million, 750 million for Raiden is not unreasonable. So I think this will go up much higher. Um, 10 X, 10X is definitely getting to a point where I think this is a really good buy at 350. I think once the upturn comes, uh, 10X will be well above $4 and head to $5 again. Let's see if I missed anything here. Walton has been down for a while and now it's coming back up. This might be a chance for it to move to catch up to VeChain. Uh, let's see. Uh, people still ask me to talk about Electronum. I think I talked about it enough, and uh, I'm not a, not the biggest fan. I'm just neutral on it. Um, all right, so let's go to page two. Um, New Time Bank. A lot of people ask me about that. I looked at it. I, I don't quite understand it yet. Um, you see, Patcoin is falling dramatically from its rise, right? Uh, if you have a chance, sell Patcoin ASAP. Uh, Athland, uh, I still like them. I like them a lot. Athland and Poet are two of my plays. I think they're going to go much higher. Poet has been hovering for a while. It's been down. It has Ever since it peaked, it has come down. Um, both of these are going much higher. Um, I still like storage. I mentioned them a few times. I think uh, their price way below Sai, like almost 10x now. I think storage is going to go much higher. Um, let's see. Blocknet. Um, Wabi. Yeah, Blocknet, I definitely like. They were just above 50s. Um, I think Blocknet's going to go higher. Wabi, I really still like. They've been going up 11%. Wabi is close to, it was like 515, 520 yesterday. So it's definitely going up. It's starting to catch up. Definitely still off like from uh, Walton and um, uh, Chain. I think Wabi, I've told you guys, has tremendous, tremendous potential. So um, this could definitely be a 750 million coin pretty easily. Um, I looked at uh, a lot of people ask me about Simple Token. I looked at it. Um, I'm not sure about it yet. I think Simple Token could be a good play. I just have to do a little bit more research. But so far, I remember what I saw yesterday looked good. Um, uh, Unicorn Gold took a dump the last few days. It's kind of like when it, it took a dump to the 70 cents and then it recover to one dollar really quick and then one dollar to two dollars i think it's kind of going through a fa same phase i don't know quite why when it drops and why it you know, goes up it goes it, it's pretty the gap is pretty huge but i still like Un unicorn gold uh you know i think this is this is still a pretty good level considering the market cap is so low 
Nulls, one of my recent plays. This has been going up. Um, definitely pretty good. You know, I recommended them around 350, so now it's more than double that. But Nulls is one of those I said it's gonna be, it's gonna be like Neo level. Okay, so this has a lot, a lot of growth. Uh, I would recommend buying Nulls as much Nulls as you can. <laughs> um, for long term hold. Okay. Um, uh, Hempcoin, you know, I, I've, I've mentioned this a lot, okay, and I, I don't bring it back always because a lot of these are lower cap. So uh, all the marijuana plays, okay, um, this could be huge. Canada is trying to legalize it uh, federally, okay. California is trying to, they're legalizing it this month. They're trying to get their, their stuff together. Um, all the marijuana industry, like all the plays in it, it's gonna have huge, huge years this year. So I've been, I covered Hempcoin. So this is like 600% growth, 600, 700% growth since I covered it. I covered uh, Dopecoin, which is even much lower. Okay, a lot of people's in pot coin. There's cannabis coin. There's one other coin that I will be talking about soon. I'm, I'm not sure how to do it, whether to do it at, as a special on on uh, YouTube or tweet it out or, or or what I'm still deciding but I have found one that's super low that that actually has their shit together they actually they're making partnerships already they're going for the the back end um, and and they're they're doing all the right things yet no one has paid attention to them they actually came out this year uh, or 2017 I should say so I might bring them up so watch out for that I think it's gonna be a really 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 good play okay these they're extremely extremely low uh, in terms of uh, circulating supply and price um, lunar has come back up in a big way I think lunar I've been telling guys this or right, ever since lunar is like twelve dollars and so it's been like 3x right Lunar, once they open up, they're, they're going to go higher. Okay, we're, we're talking about it's not unreasonable to see Lunar at 200, 250, even 300 million. That puts Lunar above, well above $100. People kind of shoved this off when I said, hey, you know what? This is going to go much higher. I mean, one of the reasons is the low circulating supplies. Um, anything else? Gifto. Um, you know what? It's, it hasn't moved yet. I'm telling you guys now. Okay. This in the next month will at least triple. And I'm telling you guys this. I'm not just pumping for my own sake. Okay. I'm telling you guys this. Um, and this might drop off even the second page. It might go on the third page. But Gifto is going to be huge. Okay. You just give it some time. People haven't really paid attention to it. This will be huge. Don't ignore Gifto. Um, I think that's it for for the list. Yeah, Potcoin is here. All right. So uh, let's talk about Neblio, okay? Um, Neblio is it did it did take a big dump today, okay? But let's look at the last month. All right, so ever since January 6th, so for the past four days, it's gone from 0 .00, 0 0.0005 cents. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, that's BTC. So it's $9 to astronomical $37. And it peaked at 60 $64. Okay, so that's a huge gain. Uh, what is that? 6x, 7x, something like that, right? And what's the reason for it? Well, a lot of people started pumping Neblio. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys this video that I found that has over 200,000 views and it was published on the 6th. Now, I don't know if... Uh, yeah, it could be this, this could be the start. Okay. But he, he started it at when it was at $12. Okay. So maybe not at the beginning, but he definitely helped contribute to it. Okay. And if you watch this video, 
why is he so excited about Neblio? What is it? Is it because of the technology? Is it an awesome team? Why is it Neblio so good? And why does he think it could be bigger than Bitcoin, which is laughable? Okay. And the reason is because he says it's the low circulating supply. That's it. His, if you watch this video, okay, this 10 minute video, he covers the team. He reads some stuff off the, off the web page for like two minutes. And then he spends eight minutes talking about how it could be equal to Litecoin and even surpass Bitcoin um, because it has a low market cap and a low circulating supply. That was his only reasoning, okay? Um, you can't judge a coin just because of a low market cap and low circulating supply. I could pick out 100 coins like that and they will be pumped 10x the next day. I'll guarantee you that. But that does not mean um, that's a good reason why the company is good just because they're low. Uh, so that's number one. And I'm sure this guy is not the only guy. I'm sure there's like two or three other people that's pumping this to the moon because obviously they have a lot invested in it, right? Um, so that's one. Number two is Nebulio's white paper. Okay, so this is a downfall of Tron, okay? And I went in to Nebulio. Normally, I don't like reading white paper because a lot of them is very technical about the blockchain and how the blockchain works and how it's so awesome, right? I, you know, that just puts me to sleep. I can't, I can't read through that. I'm not, a, I'm not that kind of tech guy. Nebulio's is not, but... If you look at Neblio's white paper, which is 20 something pages, but like 10 pages, is just white space. The other pages, it's, it's basically explains nothing. It, it, it doesn't. Okay. And I'm going to show you guys why it explains nothing. All right, let, let's get to it. Blockchain. What is the Neblio blockchain? So what is it? What, what makes it so good? This whole thing right here is not talking about Nebula's blockchain, it's talking about blockchain in general, okay? A blockchain network such as Nebula is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network of nodes that exchange information and form of transactions, blah, 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 okay? So all this, if you read through it, it's just basically about talking about blockchains in general, not about Nebula, okay? So moving on. Enterprise adoption and uh, next generation solutions. So this is what they're in, the enterprise space. And that's why a lot of people are excited about it. But let's go through this, right? So again, what's covered here is just talking about generalities of blockchain in the enterprise space. This doesn't talk about Neblio at all. Okay, so you read through this. This is just about how blockchain can be used in an enterprise, how Bitcoin started it, um, and why why it's you know rapidly developing and so so forth. Okay, now it talks about distributed applications. Again, is this about the Neblio distributed applications? No, all this is generalities about how DApps work on a blockchain. Okay, again, a whole page. Of generalities about just dApps and how dApps can be used okay so it gives you some examples like what about medical offices what about backups what about medical records what about disaster you know scenarios that is all generalities about blockchain dApps in general it has nothing to do with Neblio. let's move on all right the next generation platform okay this is this is what we've been waiting for so what is Neblio, right? So Neblio, they finally explain, is basically a bunch of APIs that allow enterprises to do whatever they need to on a blockchain very easily, and they support multiple languages. Okay, that's great. Okay, that, that, that's really great. Um, but what about the platform itself? Is, is there anything that, that talks about uh, what the platform is you know, how good it is, how many transactions, um, you know, proof of stake. Um, and what, what the, they talk about Nebula nodes and these APIs. What did, what did the nodes actually do? What are they going to provide for businesses? Why would businesses choose Nebula uh, platform outside the API? Sure, you can have APIs connected into it, but what does it do for them, right? So I'm hoping that from here on out, that's what it's going to explain, okay? Um, but no, so they kind of explain it. 
that the tokens are used to incentivize network users. It's also used for um, for validating transactions. And the more the more people that have a proof of stake node, the the more secure and the faster transaction is. Again, that's almost every blockchain out there. Okay, you use the tokens to incentivize network users. Obviously, you use the tokens in a proof of stake model to to validate transactions throughout the throughout the network. Right, so that's not a, a, a game changer setup right they do stay um uh i don't know if it actually says they are proof of stake okay and nebula network is their own i thought it was built on ethereum but they're building their own um i have seen it and now here's the roadmap okay and a lot of people are um are going crazy about the roadmap so, oh man the roadmap's awesome and i'm like i don't see it q1 um yeah, they go, they go start developing APIs, okay, like they should. And the languages they support, which is good. Uh, you got Python, JavaScript, Ruby, .NET, Java, Node, .JavaScript, all that stuff. So they go start developing that, right? And then they go start doing marketing. And then they go start releasing a V2 suite. I think the V2 suite is where it's going to be actually useful for businesses. And that's not coming until Q3. Okay, and then it goes on and on. Um, and But there's not, it's not that comprehensive. Obviously, if you guys are used to looking at Cardano's roadmap, that's very laid out, okay? But not many companies do it like that where every single step is laid out. Arc is like that. I know Cardano's like that. Some others are like that. So is not like that, but that's not, a, that's not a knock against them. But the roadmap doesn't have anything really exciting either. So, all right. So do we get down to the meat? you know the, the the meat and potatoes of this um no okay and, and here's why because these pages again okay this page this page about security okay scalability and stuff like that um it's all generalities okay i'm not gonna go through line by line by line but if you read through these okay it's pretty much about generalities again all right so Moving on, um, use cases, and they, they you know they list some things about you could store records securely, you could do audit trails, you could do internet things. Again, these are things that pretty much all blockchains can do, right? Um, blockchain is made for audit trails. You can you could use Block Explorer and see every transaction. Secure records ma management. Same thing. A lot of a lot of different coins are in specifically like records management. Like for example, Factum is doing that, which is pretty big. That's all they're dedicated for. Internet Things, obviously, IOTA's in that space, right? So a lot of these, there's different coins for a lot of these. Um, all right. So here is like their their true bread and butter, right? About APIs and what they're trying to do. Supporting the languages is really good. Okay, and they're telling you know they're basically telling you how their per, their APIs is go um, is go help the adoption of the Nebula chain and help um, enterprise uh, get involved with blockchain. They're trying to make it really really useful. They're gonna talk about enterprise driven requirements, RESTful architecture design. Those that are developers, I suggest you look at it. But I'm pretty sure this is pretty standard stuff. Okay, um, they're gonna also try to do blockchain consulting. They're going to try to work with companies and help them get involved with it, right? They're going to, they can do uh, no deployment and hosting, private blockchain development. So this is all just part of their services, okay? That's pretty much it to the Nebula white paper. There's not that much. This is not the kind of white paper where if you wanted to get answers through technical specs or technical um, um details about certain things this is not that kind of white paper not to say this is a bad white paper okay this is actually pretty good pretty easy to understand but does it belong to a, a white paper of a coin that's worth 500 million dollars probably not okay and the reason why is and i will show you because neblio is a team of two okay there's two people really on the team Eddie, who is the lead, and then Ann. And Ann is not even a developer. So Eddie is really pretty much doing everything himself. So congrats for him. He's playing CEO and lead developer. Okay. And 
In total, they only raised 1.4 million. Only, I should say only. That's not, no, I shouldn't say that. 1.4 million, which is not bad. Okay, and they were selling it for ICO at 20 cents each. So here's where, you know, I also have a problem because if you go to Nebulio, you look at the team. You know, I just mentioned about the the team of two, right? Where where do I find the team? Um, about us. Okay, so obviously you have Eddie and Ann, right? And then it looks like they picked up on marketing buys, and then you see two developers. Okay, the problem is I'm almost a hundred percent positive these are consultants, and the reason why is because if you go to their LinkedIn page, they don't even list Neblio as a company. So here's one of the guys, Riley. He's a data scientist. It shows that he's still working at Swish Analytics, which means that he's probably part time or he's a consultant to Neblio. The other guy, Samir. Same thing. He's a software developer at Tarma Group. Um, it doesn't list Nebulio anywhere. Okay, so the team is extremely small. So you got Eddie pretty much running the whole thing. You probably have Riley and Samir helping out. Okay, but the team is small. So in terms of their progress, it's going to be slow. It's not like a dedicated team of like. 50 people like how you see with Icon or our Cardano or any of these bigger companies, right? So that's also not so good for Neblio. All right. And then and then lastly, I want to mention a lot of people like the fact that Neblio burned their tokens because originally they were supposed to have, I believe, 120 million tokens. 125 million tokens, okay? Um, and they couldn't sell them. They only sold 8.8 .8 million tokens, okay? That's the reason why. So they sold 8.82 million. I think this doesn't count the fact that they also had a pre sale. But overall, this is why the circulating supply is so low. Because during the ICO, they couldn't sell the tokens. It wasn't because they made a conscious decision to say, hey, we're going to be one of those companies with a low circulating supply, so we're going to make the total of 13 million and and keep the re you know the rest circulating. No, it's because they couldn't sell them. That's why they had to burn those tokens. Okay, so that's not a good thing either. So what am I saying about Neblio? Okay, and I ranted on and on and on about Neblio, and I and, and it appears I'm very negative. I am for the fact that it's been hyped to the moon and it does doesn't deserve it at all. Again, this is one of those cases, just like Dentacoin, it's not Nebulio's fault, okay? I think the two creators have done a magnificent job to, to come up with a small startup company, utilize this craze of cryptocurrency, and now their small company that's probably worth, maybe in a real world, fifty to $100,000, now they built a company that's worth $500 million because of all the YouTubers that are hyping and pumping this coin. Okay, so in that regards, they're geniuses. Okay, obviously they do this full time forever now. I don't think Nebulio's ever go fall back to its ICO days where you know this the market cap goes down to like two million dollars. That won't happen. Nebulio, even if it falls, it'll still be at over a hundred million dollars. So good for them. Okay, and I think the idea is good. Businesses does want to utilize API, especially the mid to small to mid uh, companies. Enterprise company is not going to use in this. Okay, they're going to develop their own stuff, and they're going to be using much larger blockchains or coming up with their own blockchains. But for small to mid level companies, they could definitely use, utilize this. Okay, and I think it's a good idea. But Nebula is nowhere close to being finished, and they're a team of basically two full time people, and one of them is not even a developer. Um, so this whole concept of it being worth five hundred million, no, it should be nowhere close to it. But again, props to the owners. Uh, the creators and it's not their fault this is the fault of people greedy people that are misleading others to thinking Neblio is going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread okay mm -hmm. so that's my whole spiel about Neblio it is extremely overhyped if you made a lot of money in Neblio good for you okay and it could continue to stay at these levels this video might have no effect on Neblio but I wanted to let you guys know that this is extremely overhyped and if you're hoping that Nebulio is going to go up to a billion or two billion or 280 billion like that other two YouTuber is saying, 
it might happen still, but you're buying into a company that's way, way, way over overbought and they're not nearly as ready as you think they are. Okay, so that's it for Nebulio. All right, so this video is probably like almost an hour now, so I'm probably gonna need to end it. So a lot of you guys are thinking, okay, so what is the play that I'm going to review? And some of you guys, I would say most of you guys heard of it. It's Loop Ring. All right, and I said I made a mistake with uh, with something, and I'll reveal it. I'll own up to it. All right, so I introduced Loop Ring to my insiders uh, a couple days ago, and it's been going up, and it came down because there's a discrepancy with circulating supply. The circulating supply, according to Loop Ring, is actually 10x this. It's actually 622 million, and not 62 million. So I made a mistake on that because they tweeted, they said they corrected that on uh, Coin Market Cap, and I guess it never got corrected. But anyways, the reason why I chose Loopring is Loopring is one of the two, maybe three companies that's in the decentralized space. But they're not coming out with their own decentralized exchange. They're coming out with protocols. And Loop, that's what Loopring is. It's a protocol for decentralized exchange, specifically for ERC-20 tokens. Now, they are expanding to the new ERC-223 tokens. But for the most part, that's the space they're in. And their biggest competitor is 0x. And 0x is worth a billion dollars. And if you t multiply this by 10, it's also uh, worth a billion dollars. But here's why I like Loopring. Loopring has its own advantages. The biggest advantages is its future plans in 2018. It plans to have a huge 2018 year okay besides just working on concentrating on ethereum erc20 tokens they're coming out with um, a protocol to work with neo and quantum they have close ties with both companies both chinese companies and loop ring is a chinese company too uh loop rings founder actually is very good friends with the founder of neo and they collaborate on a lot of things so loop ring later on this year plans on coming out with the protocol for this decentralized exchange for both neo and quantum and at that time they're going to come out with lrn tokens and lrq tokens and those are will be airdrop based on a snapshot of how many people are holding loop ring so basically you think about what happened with uh next you know, people who are holding next got is go get Ignis token. Same thing. People holding on to Loop Ring will get these new LRN and LRQ tokens. So that's one huge thing. Another thing is Loop Ring has stated many times they're not really interested in to doing cross-chain swaps. They're, they concentrate on in-chain swaps. But because they're close ties with Quantum and Neo, there's rumors, and I think it's been confirmed that Neo brought Loop Ring in. To work on their next exchange and what specifically on is cross-chain swaps between neo and ethereum and quantum okay so it is going to be cross-chain so they're working on they're working with loop Ring to develop this protocol to make that happen which is huge okay so both of these things are huge because zero x is not working on any of this where zero x doesn't have any relationship with quantum neo which are huge right now right they're they're almost 10 billion dollar companies so these two things alone gets me very excited about it okay and you're getting the free airdrop tokens um there's other things too there's just from a technical standpoint it can do things where it uh I forgot their specific terms, but it allows you to buy, let's say you have three exchanges that's all using Loop Ring. When you're buying something, it will find the lowest or highest price of all three exchanges and then execute on that. So if you're buying something, let's say you wanna buy Neo, for example, it will look at all three exchanges, find the lowest price and buy for you at that price. It helps greatly with liquidity. And same thing when you're selling it, it'll find the highest price for you. Um, so there's technical advantages to loop ring and um, it also allows decentralized exchange to trade non uh, common um, um, pairs so you know how when you're buying like coins like you're always buying like neo slash btc or or quantum slash btc now you can do different pairs okay so you could do like neo slash power or um, bat slash uh, ether um, ethereum or bat slash uh, omg so you could do non-common pair trading 
and their protocol also allows that too so a lot of these things are extremely extremely exciting okay so a lot of people don't a lot of people have heard of loop ring loop ring has been around for a while a lot of YouTube guys have been talking about loop ring but I don't think they got the attention they deserve uh, there's a lot of things going on in 2018 a lot of things going on and I think loop ring is definitely a winner okay now obviously with the wrong circulating supply I anticipate this to be like 10x 20x play but seeing how it's already at if this is corrected at 1 billion I think their their upside is limited but I still think that even at 1 billion they could easily see 1.5 billion 2 billion possibly 3 billion in short order seeing how where everything else is and seeing how their biggest competitor zero X is already at 1 billion and not doing any of these things that I just talked about okay so that is the play that I'm revealing um, to you guys today uh, from my insiders and I think that's it I think that's it today uh, market cap obviously is going back up a little bit which is good obviously we want to see good things um, I'm still debating on that other uh, other play I mentioned uh, that's in the marijuana industry I might do something with my 30th thousand subscriber maybe I'll correlate with that or maybe I'll do something different I'm still not sure uh, but I'll definitely let you guys know I will say again if you guys don't follow me on Twitter please do because I'm gonna start being more active with Twitter I might drop few hints about things. I might even reveal plays on Twitter that I don't reveal anywhere else. So be sure to subscribe to my Twitter page. You can find that in my description. Um, and that's it for today. This I don't even know how long this video is. Probably like an hour. It's, I've been going on and on and on. Hopefully you guys enjoy this and I will see you tomorrow. All right, guys. Take so unfortunately, the last few days, we've seen the market cap go around. Yesterday, the last two days, around 714 billion 710 and then throughout the day it will go up some 40 some 50 uh we've seen as high as 800 and then toward the end of the day come back down and then going all the way until today it's been down um so it's interesting to see the market's not crashing but you have you do see some big losers and then you see some winners but most of the winners that you see are the are the ones that are going up in double or triple digits um so yeah so i think there might be some volatility coming um so some people pointed out the bitcoin futures the first bitcoin future is go um expire pretty soon so there might be some volatility due to that but overall things aren't too bad it's definitely a good chance to buy cheap coins okay um you know we sat through two decent corrections you know a few days ago um, probably three days three four days ago we saw 20-30% correction that came back up pretty quickly. Then, of course, oh, two weeks ago, we saw the big Bitcoin correction with everything going down 30-40-50%. percent So, this is not too bad. But obviously, you know, those that are, you know, disappointed, hoping that their portfolio goes up every single day. It's not going to happen, right? So, take the opportunity to buy things while it's cheap. So, Bitcoin definitely came down a little bit. 14000 not bad. Ethereum is on... It's hot right now. Um, a lot of people ask me because my hedge strategy of the 50, 25, 25 rule, right? Um, they're like, hey, can we replace Bitcoin with Ethereum? Because Ethereum seems to be a better hedge. Um, it seems to be going up faster. And um, and overall, it just seems like it's safer to store your coins in Ethereum. I'm mixed by that because of the fact that we have seen periods where Ethereum is really rock stable. Okay, especially when it was around the 300 mark. It was around 300 for months. And back then I said, yeah, I think Ethereum is good, uh, like a staking coin, like where if you want to transfer value, you put it in Ethereum. But we have seen Ethereum go up quite a bit since those days, right? Ever since it passed 400, 500, it started going up really rapidly. And Ethereum, I think, should be at these levels. At 130 billion, I don't think it's overbought at all. Okay, charts might show something else, but in terms of if you compare it relative to these other generation, um, these generation two platform coins or platform coins in general or enterprise coins, uh, this is still a bargain. Ethereum should be, you know what, Ethereum can be at 200 or 235, it could be equal to Bitcoin's uh, overall market cap. I think that's warranted for Ethereum. Okay, that means nothing, it, it, it doesn't. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys why it explains nothing. 
All right, let, let's get to it. Blockchain. What is the Nebulio blockchain? So what is it? What, what makes it so good? This whole thing right here is not talking about Nebulio's blockchain. It's talking about blockchain in general. Okay? A blockchain network such as Nebulio is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network of nodes that exchange information and form of transactions. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? So all this, if you read through it, it's just basically about talking about blockchains in general, not about Nebulio. Okay? So moving on. Enterprise adoption and uh, next generation solutions. So this is what they're in, the enterprise space, and that's why a lot of people are excited about it. But let's go through this, right? So again, what's covered here is just talking about generalities of blockchain in the enterprise space. This doesn't talk about Neblio at all. Okay, so you read through this. This is just about how blockchain can be used in our enterprise, how Bitcoin started it, um, and why why it's you know rapidly developing and still so forth. Okay, now it talks about distributed applications. Again, is this about the Neblio distributed applications? No, all this is generalities about how DApps work on a blockchain. Okay, again, a whole page. Of generalities about just dApps and how dApps can be used okay so it gives you some examples like what about medical offices what about backups what about medical records what about disaster you know scenarios that is all generalities about blockchain dApps in general it has nothing to do with Neblio. let's move on all right the next generation platform okay this is this is what we've been waiting for so what is Neblio, right? So Neblio, they finally explain, is basically a bunch of APIs that allow enterprises to do whatever they need to on a blockchain very easily, and they support multiple languages. Okay, that's great. Okay, that, that, that's really great. Um, but what about the platform itself? Is, is there anything that, that talks about uh, what the platform is you know, how good it is, how many transactions, um, you know, proof of stake, um, and what, what the, they talk about Nebula nodes and these APIs. So what, did, what did the nodes actually do? What are they going to provide for businesses? Why would businesses choose Nebula uh, platform outside the API? Sure, you can have APIs connected into it, but what does it do for them, right? So I'm hoping that from here on out, that's what it's going to explain, okay? Um, um, no, okay, and, and here's why because these pages again, okay, this page, this page about security, okay, scalability, and stuff like that, um, it's all generalities, okay. I'm not gonna go through line by line by line, but if you read through these, okay, it's pretty much about generalities again, all right. So, moving on, um use cases and they, they you know they list some things about you could store records securely you could do audit trails you could do internet things again these are things that pretty much all blockchains can do right um blockchain is made for audit trails you can you could use block explorer and see every transaction secure records ma management same thing a lot of a lot of different coins are in specifically like records management like for example factum is doing that which is pretty big that's all they're dedicated for internet things obviously iota's in that space right so a lot of these there's different coins for a lot of these um all right so here is like their their true bread and butter right about apis and what they're trying to do supporting the languages is really good Okay, and they're telling you know they're basically telling you how their per, their APIs is go um, is go help the adoption of the Nebula chain and help um, enterprise uh, get involved with blockchain. They're trying to make it really really useful. They're gonna talk about enterprise driven requirements, RESTful architecture design. Those that are our developers, I suggest you look at it. But I'm pretty sure this is pretty standard stuff. Okay, um, they're gonna also try to do blockchain consulting. They're going to try to work with companies and help them get involved with it, right? They're going to, they can do uh, no deployment and hosting, private blockchain development. So this is all just part of their services, okay? That's pretty much it to the Nebula white paper. 
there's not that much. This is not the kind of white paper where if you wanted to get answers through technical specs or technical um, um, details about certain things, this is not that kind of white paper. Not to say this is a bad white paper, okay? This is actually pretty good, pretty easy to understand. But does it belong to a, a white paper of a coin that's worth $500 million? Probably not, okay? And the reason why is, and I will show you, because Neblio is a team of two, okay? There's two people really on the team. Eddie, who is the lead, and then Ann. And Ann is not even a developer. So Eddie is really pretty much doing everything himself. So congrats for him. He's playing CEO and lead developer, okay? And in total, they only raised uh, possibly around... Um, 125 uh, I think that might be where it goes and then it'll kind of hover and it might go back up so it really depends on if all th this other my intuition is telling me that some other bad news might be coming out but if it doesn't it might hover at this point but I I'm my gut tells me I think this is gonna go down more so I'm gonna take this off the buy table for now I would say wait at least for it to go under 150 before buying, okay? And many of you guys that bought at $253, um, don't, don't panic sell, okay? So Ripple's one of those long-term plays, so if you do have it, just hold it. It might take you a while, it might take three months, it might take two weeks, it might take a year, but Ripple will go back to it and you will be in the green, but you just might have to hold it a little bit longer, okay? Um, Bitcoin Cash, not sure why it went up. All right, so we, we got a lot of reds here. Okay, some of the bigger movers went down. Uh, Stellar is going down. All right, I think Stellar needs to, um, you know what? The reason why I recommended Stellar going up so much is because I said it was go ride the coattails of Ripple. And now that Ripple is showing weakness, Stellar's been showing weakness. I do think Stellar is going you know, kind of fork away from Ripple because they have been making different uh, partnerships. So I'm hoping more of those partnerships comes up. But until that happens, if there's nothing from the, the Stellar camp and Ripple goes down more, Stellar will go down more. So um, Stellar holders, be careful. Um, Stellar is also one of those coins that went really, really fast from like, you know, 1 billion, 2 billion, went up to 10 billion, you know, 50, 12 billion and I said that I think it'll go up higher to 20 something billion because Ripple was just going higher and higher and higher. So um, Stellar's not bad. It's just that I think because of Ripple's fall, Stellar will fall. So um, so do not buy at these levels is, is, is what I'm saying. But if you do own Stellar, just hold it. Um, all right, so Tron has now fallen to 10 cents, okay? Um, Tron is unfortunately a casualty too. When you have, and here's the other thing too about FOMO and newcomers into cryptocurrency, because you got so many newcomers that are not used to big corrections or not used to corrections at all. All these newcomers come in because they're promised big gains. And for the most part, people have seen it, right? You hold on something and it just doubles or triples or tenfolds in a month. Okay, but unfortunately, when you have correction time or when FUD comes out and bad 62 million, so I made a mistake on that because they tweeted they said they corrected that on uh, coin market cap, and I guess it never got corrected. But, anyways, the reason why I chose Loopring is Loopring is one of the two, maybe three companies that's in the decentralized space, but they're not coming out to their own decentralized exchange, they're coming out with protocols. And loop that's what loopering is. It's a protocol for decentralized exchange, specifically for ERC20 tokens. Now they are expanding to the new ERC223 tokens, but for the most part, that's the space they're in. And their biggest competitor is 0x. And 0x is worth a billion dollars. And if you t multiply this by 10, it's also uh, worth a billion dollars. But here's why I like Loopring. Loopring has its own advantages. The biggest advantages is its future plans in 2018. It plans to have a huge 2018 year, okay? Besides just working on concentrating on Ethereum ERC20 tokens, they're coming out with um, a protocol to work with NEO 
and Quantum. They have close ties with both companies, both Chinese companies, and Loopring is a Chinese company too. Uh, Loopring's founder actually is very good friends with the founder, Neil. And they collaborate on a lot of things. So Loopring later on this year plans on coming out with a protocol for this decentralized exchange for both Neo and Quantum. And at that time, they're gonna come out with LRN tokens and LRQ tokens. And those are will be airdrop based on a snapshot of how many people are holding Loopring. So basically, you think about what happened with uh, Next. You know, people are holding next got is go get Ignis token. Same thing. People holding on to loop ring will get these new LRN and LRQ tokens. So that's one huge thing. Another thing is loop ring has stated many times they're not really interested in to doing cross chain swaps. They're, they concentrate on in chain swaps. But because of their close ties with Quantum and Neo, there's rumors, and I think it's been confirmed that Neo brought loop ring in. To work on their next exchange and what specifically on is cross-chain swaps between neo and ethereum and quantum okay so it is going to be cross-chain so they're working on they're working with loopring to develop this protocol to make that happen which is huge okay so both of these things are huge because zero x is not working on any of this where zero x doesn't have any relationship with quantum neo which are huge right now right they're they're almost 10 billion dollar companies so these two things alone gets me very excited about it okay and you're getting the free airdrop tokens um there's other things too just just from a technical standpoint it can do things where it uh I forgot their specific terms, but it allows you to buy, let's say you have three exchanges that's all using Loopring and is holding strong, um, uh, let's see, Denticoin, Falling, Steam, Falling. You notice the big fallers are the ones that's gone up a lot recently, and that's because of this newcomer money coming in, right? Newcomer com money coming in, it gets pulled out, that's why they're going down uh, faster than others. Dragon Chain's gone down. Wax went up. Uh, there's not many places to buy Wax, by the way. I think that's really holding Wax back. Um, all right, so these all double digits pretty much. Yep, Pivx is even Funfair. Yeah, I mean, Funfair's been going up a lot, so that's that's to be expected. Redcoin, um, a lot of these going down. All right, so... Some of these, uh, so you know, so I'm going through this fast. Some, some of you guys are thinking, oh, okay, well, these are down. What, what are our buys? Um, a lot of these, even though they're down, they're still overpriced, in my opinion, because the market's just been so hot. So that's why there's there's not a lot of like golden opportunities right now that I'm seeing. Um, I skipped over a few basic attention coin. I, I talked to about them a lot at seventy, you know, up to a dollar to go go there. Um, so I think this is still a good buy. If it falls further, definitely a better buy. Um, let's see. Substratum, it, you know, it hit like 280. I think this is still going to go much higher. This is good. Um, Power Ledger, still uh, good in my book. I'm going to talk about Nebula, okay? So this took a big drop, 35%. That's a pretty significant drop. And I think it's going to go down more, especially after what I tell you guys. Um, all right. So where are some buys here? Vibe is definitely the pump of the day. It, you know, it just got released. It's going to be added to Binance. People are going crazy about Vibe. I'm going to do some research and see if this is warranted because no coin should go above 100% in a day. Um, I've seen it, obviously, right? And we have seen things go up. But when it goes to 400% a day, you know, something's wrong. Okay, it's being extremely pumped. Um Man, Raiden is holding extremely strong. It's still going up. There's a lot more uh, talks about Raiden um, uh, talking with a lot of these bigger companies that 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 has scaling issues. And I have told you guys this. You know, Raiden is gonna go much higher. This is gonna be one of the the most used networks um, or pro, I guess protocols, right? The Raiden network for ERC tier is just.
talking about generalities of blockchain in the enterprise space. This doesn't talk about Neblio at all. Okay, so you read through this. This is just about how blockchain can be used in our enterprise, how Bitcoin started it, um, and why why it's you know rapidly developing and still so forth. Okay, now it talks about distributed applications. Again, is this about the Neblio distributed applications? No, all this is generalities about how DApps work on a blockchain. Okay, again, a whole page. Of generalities about just dApps and how dApps can be used okay so it gives you some examples like what about medical offices what about backups what about medical records what about disaster you know scenarios that is all generalities about blockchain dApps in general it has nothing to do with Neblio let's move on all right the next generation platform okay this is this is what we've been waiting for so what is Neblio, right? So Neblio, they finally explain, is basically a bunch of APIs that allow enterprises to do whatever they need to on a blockchain very easily, and they support multiple languages. Okay, that's great. Okay, that, that, that's really great. Um, but what about the platform itself? Is, is there anything that, that talks about uh, what the platform is you know how good it is how many transactions um, you know proof of stake um, and what what the, they talk about Neblio nodes and these API's so what did what did the nodes actually do where are they go provide for businesses why would businesses choose Neblio uh, platform outside the API sure you can have API's connected into it but what does it do for them right so I'm hoping that from here on out that's what is go explain okay um, but no, so they kind of explain it that the tokens are used to incentivize network users. It's also used for um, for validating transactions. And the more the more people that have a proof of stake node, the the more secure and the faster transaction is. Again, that's almost every blockchain out there. Okay, you use the tokens to incentivize network users. Obviously, you use the tokens in a proof of stake model. To, to validate transactions throughout the throughout the network, right? So that's not a, a, a game changer setup, right? They do say, um, uh, I don't know if it actually says, they are proof of stake, okay? And Nebula Network is their own. I thought it was built on Ethereum, but they're building their own. Um, I have seen it. And now here's the roadmap, okay? And a lot of people are, um, are um, all right. So where are some buys here? Vibe is definitely the pump of the day. It, you know, it just got released. It's gonna be added to Binance. People are going crazy about Vibe. I'm gonna do some research and see if this is warranted because no coin should go above 100% in a day. Um, I've seen it, obviously, right? And we have seen things go up, but when it goes up 400% a day, you know, something's wrong, okay? It's being extremely pumped. Um, man, Raiden is holding extremely strong. It's still going up. There's a lot more uh, talks about Raiden um, uh, talking with a lot of these bigger companies that, that, that have scaling issues. And I, I've told you guys this, you know, Raiden is going to go much higher. This is going to be one of the, the most used networks um, or, pro, I guess, protocols, right? The Raiden network for ERC-20 because out of the 13, 1400, you know, um, companies out here, most of them are ERC-20 based. So uh, Raiden is going to have a bright future. Um, I don't recommend buying at this point. I'm hoping it comes down, but this might go up. Overall, I think Raiden network, 500 million, 750 million for Raiden is not unreasonable. So I think this will go up much higher. Um, 10X. 10x is definitely getting to a point where I think this is a really good buy at 350. I think once the upturn comes, uh, 10x will be well above four dollars and head to five dollars again. Let's see if I missed anything here. Walton has been down for a while and now it's coming back up. This might be a chance for it to move to catch up to V chain. Uh, let's see. Uh, people still ask me to talk about Electronum. 
I think I talked about him enough, and uh, I'm not a, not the biggest fan. I'm just neutral on it. Um, all right, so let's go to page two. Um, New Time Bank. A lot of people ask me about that. I looked at it. I don't quite understand it yet. Um, you see, Patcoin is falling dramatically from its rise, right? Um, if you have a chance, sell Patcoin ASAP. Uh, Athland, uh, I still like them. I like them a lot. Athland and Poet are two of my plays. I think they're going to go much higher. Poet has been hovering for a while. It's been down. It has, ever since it peaked, it has come down. Um, both of these are going much higher. Um, I still like storage. I mentioned them a few times. I think uh, their price way bonus, which might drive it up again. But the two bad news I mentioned yesterday about the $6 billion sell and um, the white paper copy, um, that just that was too much for a lot of people. And it really wasn't too much for most people. It was because Tron was already overbought, way overbought, and it just gave an excuse for a lot of these whale and institutional investors to sell off. And then everyone just contributed, oh, it must be these, these two pieces of news. And that's why it's drawing down fast. I don't think so. I think it's because an investor just want to pull out because it would just went up like, you know, 20 X. Um, so, um, what should you do over Tron, right? So I said in the past few days, if buy Tron about 11, 12 cents, uh, obviously, we're below that. I think if you bought at 11, 12 cents, you're, you're safe. I don't think Tron will fall that much more. If Tron falls because the rest of the market is fall, it might fall to maybe 9 cents, 8 cents. But if the market recovers, I think Tron will stay here. And there's a very good chance that if those upcoming news, like the partnerships Justin promised with NASDAQ listed companies, uh, comes true and they might be huge that could be a huge push for Tron to go back up again so you got to wait for that and then also the coin burning which uh, I forgot the percent it was like 25% or, or something like something huge that should decrease the amount of tokens and that should drive the price up too so it's not all bad for Tron obviously I still like Tron I just I've been saying it too it's just been way too overbought and now it's coming back to the levels where it should be um and, the, and that's pretty much it. So should you buy? Uh, I would say it's it's not bad to buy a 10 cents. But I think if it falls, we'll see how the market is the rest of the day. If the market is still bad, it falls to 9, 8 cents, then definitely buy. Um, especially if it, if it hits 8 cents, it's definitely buy. Um, all right. So some of these just down a little bit. Um, Rybox up a little bit. It's been down for a few days. Okay. Ethereum Classic, surprise. Uh, Verge, um, definitely coming down. After Wraith, it went back up. Now it's coming down. As long as Wraith, I mean, uh, Verge can hold her at $2 billion, um, then it's here to stay. Um, it's just that it's, it's too much turmoil right now between on Verge. So I just want to see it, you know, just hover around here for a while. All right. Um, so I might go, uh, I said they were a good buy. I think falling down, they didn't fall that much. It, it, it just falls to 20, uh, definitely a good buy. Even at this level, 22 is not a bad. Uh, Sidecoin's going down. Zcash is holding very strong. Um, yeah, Zcash was down for a while. Now it's coming back off when I said, hey, you know what? This is gonna go much higher. I mean, one of the reasons is the low circulating supplies. Um, Anything else? Gifto. Um, you know what? It's, it hasn't moved yet. I'm telling you guys now. Okay. This in the next month will at least triple. And I'm telling you guys this. I'm not just pumping for my own sake. Okay. I'm telling you guys this. Um, and this might drop off even the second page. It might go on the third page. But Gifto is going to be huge. Okay. You just give it some time. People haven't really paid attention to it. This will be huge. Don't ignore Gifto. Um, I think that's it for for the list. Yeah, Podcoin is here. All right. So uh, let's talk about Neblio. Okay. 
Um, Neblio is it did it did take a big dump today. Okay, but let's look at the last month. All right, so ever since January 6th, so for the past four days, it's gone from 0 .00, 0 0.0005 cents. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, that's BTC. So it's $9 to astronomical $37. And it peaked at $60, $64. Okay, so that's a huge gain. Uh, what is that? 6x, 7x, something like that, right? And what's the reason for it? Well, a lot of people started pumping Neblio. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys this video that I found that has over 200,000 views and it was published on the 6th. Now, I don't know if... Uh, yeah, it could be this. This could be the start, okay. But he he started it at when it was at twelve dollars, okay. So maybe not at the beginning, but he definitely helped contribute to it, okay. And if you watch this video, why is he so excited about Neblio? What is it? Is it because of the technology? Is it an awesome team? Why is it Neblio so good? And why does he think it could be bigger than Bitcoin, which is laughable, okay? And the reason is because he says it's the low circulating supply. That's it. His, if you watch this video, okay, this 10 minute video, he covers the team. He reads some stuff off the, off the web page for like two minutes. And then he spends eight minutes talking about how it could be equal to Litecoin. And I'm still on the fence on, the, on that because things that go up very quick, Tend to come down really quick and right now it's kind of that period where ethereum is getting really hot but in a few months you know that might change it might be that or maybe even next week or two weeks it might change where it it moves back down really quick too so um i still like bitcoin better at this time but i would say if you wanted to do that strategy where you hedge 50 percent with ethereum uh, it's not too bad. Uh, I mean, you can, you can give it a try. I think that that could work. Um, we'll just see. It's just uh, right now, things are a little bit iffy. You know, Bitcoin is definitely not performing like Bitcoin, like how it was before. Ethereum is definitely coming back, so that's good. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. So if you guys want to practice that, that's fine. Um, Ripple. Everyone keeps asking about Ripple. George, what should I do about Ripple? It's going down, 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 right? Ripple was overbought. And I said that many times. A lot of people didn't like it. I kept saying it's overbought, 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 right? I, I'm still not saying that this is, I'm not doing what I say it's bad, okay? But it was clear. Ripple was overbought. It should never have gotten that high. It should never have gotten above $2, $2 $2.50, $3, 350 That's insane, okay? Um, and when things go up that fast, people look for ways to knock it down. So now there's something, so someone showed me a news, um, Ripple is having a lawsuit against someone else. Uh, and this one could be a devastating one. Um, I guess with a company called R3, and there's an R3 coin, I don't know if it's that company or not, okay? So back when, back in the day, Ripple made some kind of deal where um, the, this R3 company could purchase up to 10% of Ripple for less than one cent, okay? And and I don't, I don't know the details around that. You guys should look. Um, I should have read that more in detail, but I know the overall story is that company could buy 10% of Ripple um, coins for one cent, less than one cent each. And this was before Ripple has gone up huge, okay? So now that Ripple went up so much, that would have been worth when Ripple was above 100 billion, you know, it would have been worth 10 billion dollars. Now it's worth about seven billion dollars. Ripple changed its mind. Ripple is like, no, we don't want to give you though. We don't want to give you that option yet, uh, or anymore, um, because it's not worth it. And Ripple is trying to uh, take a lawsuit against that company, trying to cause all this commotion, saying, oh, they didn't promise what they delivered and this and that. So I don't know the entire story. I don't know which side is right or wrong. But it makes Ripple look bad because they made a business deal and they promised this company that they can buy up to 10% of Ripple at one cent each. Of course, that company would want to buy it at 
weapon still, but you're buying into a company that's way, way, way over overbought, and they're not nearly as ready as you think they are. Okay, so that's it for Nebulio. All right, so this video is probably like almost an hour now, so I'm probably gonna need to end it. So. A lot of you guys are thinking, okay, so what is the play that I'm going to review? And some of you guys, I would say most of you guys heard of it. It's Loop Ring. All right. And I said I made a mistake with, uh, with something and I'll reveal it. I'll own up to it. All right. So I introduced Loop Ring to my insiders uh, a couple days ago and it's been going up and it came down because there's a discrepancy with circulating supply. The circuit supply, according to Loopring, is actually 10x this. It's actually 622 million and not 62 million. So I made a mistake on that because they tweeted, they said they corrected that on uh, CoinMarketCap, and I guess it never got corrected. But, anyways, the reason why I chose Loopring is Loopring is one of the two, maybe three companies that's in the decentralized space. But they're not coming out of their own decentralized exchange. They're coming out with protocols. And loop that's what Loopring is. It's a protocol for decentralized exchange, specifically for ERC-20 tokens. Now, they are expanding to the new ERC-223 tokens. But for the most part, that's the space they're in. And their biggest competitor is 0x. And 0x is worth a billion dollars. And if you t multiply this by 10, it's also uh, worth a billion dollars. But here's why I like Loopring. Loopring has its own advantages. The biggest advantages is its future plans in 2018. It plans to have a huge 2018 year, okay? Besides just working on concentrating on Ethereum ERC-20 tokens, they're coming out with um, a protocol to work with NEO and Quantum. They have close ties with both companies, both Chinese companies, and Loopring is a Chinese company too. Uh, Loop Ring's founder actually is very good friends with the founder of Neo, and they collaborate on a lot of things. So Loop Ring later on this year plans on coming out with a protocol for this decentralized exchange for both Neo and Quantum. And at that time, they're going to come out with LRN tokens and LRQ tokens. And those are, will be airdrop based on a snapshot of how many people are holding Loop Ring. So basically, you think about what happened with uh, Next. You know, people who are holding next got is go get Ignis token. Same thing. People holding on to Loop Ring will get these new LRN and LRQ tokens. So that's one huge thing. Another thing is Loop Ring has stated many times they're not really interested in to, doing cross-chain swaps. They're, they concentrate on in-chain swaps. But because of their close ties with Quantum and Neo, there's rumors, and I think it's been confirmed that Neo brought Loop Ring in to work on their next exchange.